There's nothing like a good ghost story to keep you entertained on a rainy night. So sit back, relax, let me lead the way, and let's get scared together, 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 together. When my wife and I bought our first home, an old Victorian house built in the 50s, almost every night we heard what sounded like a child running up and down the hallways. My wife mentioned this to one of our neighbors, and she said it was probably just peacocks on the roof. Our house backed up to a conservation area, and there were wild peacocks that lived there, and from time to time one would get on the roof. That answer made sense to us, so we just accepted it and learned to ignore it. Less than a year later, our son David was born. When he was one year old, he would balance his toys on top of other toys and make them spin. He was literally able, at the age of one, to find the center of gravity of various toys, balance them on one another, and slowly walk in a circle around the room, giving each one a gentle push to keep it spinning, like those people in the circus that spin plates. It was the strangest and coolest thing I'd ever seen. Then when he was three years old, he started talking to himself in his room at night. One time I asked him who he was talking to. He replied, Tracy. I asked him who Tracy was and he said, The girl that lives in the wall. She's usually nice, but sometimes she scares me. He said Tracy had long brown hair and always had on the same yellow dress. He said she would play with him sometimes and wake him up at night. But he didn't seem bothered by it, just a bit startled at times. He would talk about Tracy once in a while after that, but it certainly didn't happen every day. Two years later, we renovated the house and moved the master bedroom downstairs and switched the kids' rooms around. Our younger daughter, Dylan, then occupied David's old room. She was at the age where she was about to transition from a crib to a bed. She'd always been a very sound sleeper, but after the move, she cried almost every night in that room. Her first night sleeping in the new bed, we heard a loud thud, followed by screaming. We rushed into her room, thinking she must have fallen out of bed, but we found her clear on the other side of the room. We asked her what happened, but she wouldn't say. We calmed her down and put her back to bed. But it happened again the very next night. In fact, it happened so often, we ended up switching their rooms back. And she was fine after that. No more waking up on the other side of the room in the middle of the night. We looked up the history of the house, but we didn't find anything about a missing girl or any record of a Tracy who had lived there before. Eventually, our son stopped talking about her, and a few years later, I took a job out of town and we ended up moving. The house was empty for a few months after we moved, and the neighbor across the street called my wife one day. She said about a week after we left, she thought she saw our daughter in the upstairs window, so she waved at her. And then she remembered, we didn't live there anymore. No one did. Except... Maybe Tracy. One night when I was ten years old, I was awoken when someone sat on my bed. I could feel the mattress sink and something graze against my leg. Thinking it was my mom, I sat up, only to see a pale young boy without eyes. There were only black sockets where the eyes should have been. He was sitting at the foot of my bed with his legs crossed, and even though he had no eyes, he was looking in my direction, and I could feel him staring at me. He was holding something, but I couldn't tell what, and he stretched out his hands as though to give it to me. I was so afraid I shut my eyes, and when I reopened them, he was gone. But the bed still had the imprint from where he sat. I told my mom the next morning, and she was slightly freaked out, but assured me I was only dreaming. Fast forward five years, and I had a girlfriend, Mary. She was over at my house doing homework and fell asleep on the couch waiting for her parents to pick her up after school. 
When they arrived, I tried to wake her up to let her know they were there. She opened her eyes, sat up, pointed to the ceiling in the corner of the room, then fell right back to sleep. I tried waking her again, and when she was fully awake and conscious, I asked her what the hell that was all about. She said, I thought I was dreaming. I looked up at the ceiling in the corner of the room, and I saw a little boy with no eyes clinging to the ceiling like Spider-Man, staring down at me. Okay, I admit it. That freaked me out. And for the first time ever, I told her the story of my encounter with that same little boy. Fast forward another five years. Mary and I were still together, and by that time, we had a two-year-old daughter. We were living in my old bedroom in my parents' house while house hunting. Our daughter started waking up every night at the same time and talking to herself. For a while, we thought it was a normal baby thing. Then, I noticed that it was almost the same conversation at the same time every night. I playfully asked her one day who she talks to every night, and she said, A little boy. He's lost and looking for his mommy. I told my mother about it, and she said, I remember when that happened to you, then Mary. I have no idea what that is. Mary and I only saw the boy one time each, but our daughter had nightly conversations with this boy until we found her own place and moved away later that year. When my father and uncle were younger, they took a job cleaning out the attic for an old lady. She lived in a one-story house, and the attic was really just a crawl space, the kind where you can't stand up fully and have to crawl everywhere. Hence the name, crawl space. The woman said she'd been hearing noises in the attic and thought maybe some animals had gotten in there, so she wanted them to take her stuff out of the storage area before it got chewed up. Now, for some reason, the only access to the crawl space was in the living room ceiling, so they got a tall stepladder, positioned it underneath the opening, and my uncle climbed up and pushed the door open. He popped his head through the opening, only to find that the attic, completely defying all logic and dimension of space, was an exact replica of the living room beneath it, complete with furniture, light fixtures, and doorways leading to God knows where. My dad was standing beneath the opening looking up, and he said even from down there he could tell something wasn't right by the way the roof looked too far away. Like that hallway looks in the movie Poltergeist. It keeps getting longer and longer the more you run, and you never reach the end. He saw the look on my uncle's face, and when he said, Uh, we've got to go. My dad did not argue. My uncle pulled the door shut and apologized to the lady, saying that they couldn't take the job, and they both took off running. Dad said my uncle wouldn't even talk to him until they were at least a mile away from that house. He was still that freaked out. To this day, they have no explanation for how a regular-sized room could exist in what was supposed to be, and looked like from the outside of the house, a three-foot-tall crawl space. This is a story that I don't tell very often. I've tried to find an explanation for what happened, reasonable or otherwise, but I have yet to find one. As a child, I had a fear of the dark. I swore to my mother that I heard voices coming from the darkness, no matter where it was. The voices were not evil, but they weren't familiar to me, so they scared me. I would wake up in the middle of the night and hear voices whispering to me. My mom said that they were just bumps in the night and the normal fodder of children's nightmares. But I tried to explain to her that it was much more than that, that these were not my imagination and they sounded different from how real people's voices sounded. 
Sometimes I'd be so scared from these whispers that I would sleep in my mom's bed with her. It was an added bonus that the bathroom was directly outside of her bedroom door, in case I needed the toilet during the night. I should add at this point that when walking down the hall to go to the bathroom, you could see directly down the staircase that led to the first floor living room. So one night, a few days before Christmas, I awoke and felt the need to relieve myself. As I walked to the bathroom, I distinctly heard a voice say, Hey, look. And to my astonishment, a red light, almost like a spotlight, was cast upon the wall at the very bottom of the stairs. The light seemed to have no source. It seemed to exist all on its own. And I was absolutely transfixed by it. Me being a kid, and it being close to Christmas time, I thought I knew exactly what that light was. Of course, it had to be Santa. He came to my house to see if I was being a good boy or not. I was so excited, I immediately began walking down the stairs to go greet him, and I started going faster when I saw that the light was slowly creeping away along the wall and fading into the darkness of the living room. And that's when I heard it, a strong masculine voice that was not my father and was completely different from the first voice that told me to look, said, Stop right now. Go back up those stairs. I instinctively obeyed and turned around, and when I got to the top of the stairs, I heard a very loud crash in the living room. It scared me and sent me running to my mother's room. I jumped in bed with her and stayed there the whole night. When my parents and I awoke the next morning, we found that the string of Christmas lights that my mom had used to decorate the stair railing with were lying in a broken heap at the bottom of the stairway. It looked as if somebody had torn them down really hard and thrown them on the floor. Then, we found that a very heavy wooden hutch in the living room had fallen over. My mother couldn't explain it, and my father thought that maybe someone had broken in, but nothing was missing. There didn't seem to be any reason for the broken lights and fallen hutch. Then I saw it. There, on the back of the hutch, there were three deep, claw-like gouge marks in the wood, as if something had picked it up, then thrown it to the ground with a great force. That must have been the cause of the loud bang I'd heard the previous night. I was terrified. After that night, I never heard the voices again. I don't like to think of what type of entity was trying to lure me into the living room that night. But thank God for that protective warning voice. It saved me from whatever it was that was trying to hurt me. My dad was a high school teacher who taught for 30 years. The school was in a small town in the middle of Texas, and the room where my dad taught was the same room that the former principal, Mr. Dunn, used to teach in. I'm not sure exactly what happened to Mr. Dunn, but I do know that he was forced to resign and later hung himself from the tree across from the school. One night around 10 p.m., my dad had to go back to the school to grab some paperwork he forgot in his classroom. As he was climbing the stairs, he said he heard what sounded like someone giving a lecture. It was a man's voice, loud and confident. Dad thought, who's teaching at this time of night? But when he got to the top of the stairs and opened the door, all the lights were off and no one was there. Then he remembered Mr. Dunn and how much he loved to teach. My dad grabbed the papers that he needed and ran out of there as fast as he could. It really kind of freaked him out. Dad taught there for a long time, so he got to hear some of the other paranormal stories that went around. One of the best? One morning, when the front office staff came to open the building, they found the doors already unlocked. Thinking that someone may have broken in, they checked the security footage. It showed the vice principal locking the door the previous evening and leaving. Then, around 3 a.m., 
you could see that the lock was turning and the doors opened, all on their own. One of the staff members said, Well, I guess we don't have to call the cops. This happened to my uncle in India. He worked as a guard for the Indian railways, and he would ride the freight trains from one place to the other. Once he was working late night at 2 a.m., the train stopped somewhere in the middle of a forest for a red light. When it stopped, my uncle got off the train to smoke a cigarette. It was completely dark outside and quiet, except for the sound of crickets. As he smoked, from out of the darkness, he heard a female voice asking, Why don't you give me one of those too? That spooked him, so he took out his flashlight and shined it into the forest, but he couldn't see anyone. As he did this, that same woman's voice said again, Why don't you give me one, too? My uncle got back on the train and told the engineer what happened. The engineer told my uncle not to ever get off the train in that part of the woods again. That area was infamous for having the Dayan in the forest. Dayan are considered to be witches. It's believed that women who die as a result of being mistreated by their own family will return to drink the blood of any male family member and try to lure all men to their death. But my uncle didn't believe that. So, gathering up his courage, he wanted to find out exactly what was going on. He got off the train again and shouted into the darkness, Who are you? Come show yourself! The only response he got was the soft laughter of a woman. By this time, the red signal had turned green, so he quickly boarded the train and left. My uncle found out later that several other guards working on that train had the exact same thing happen to them. When I was in third grade, my father's job transferred him back to his hometown in Kentucky. My grandmother had just remarried and moved in with her new husband, so she let us take over her old home, a double-wide trailer. It sat on a piece of land that was over 200 years old and had a very long history of weird things happening. When my dad grew up there as a boy, he said that my uncle's bedroom was the center of the paranormal activity. One night... My dad was even dragged out of bed by an unseen force. When we moved in, my brother took my uncle's old room and I stayed in dad's old room. One night around 9.30 p.m. I was lying in bed when I saw a shadow in the hallway. My dad used to tuck my brother in at night, so at first I thought it was him, until the figure turned and stood in the doorway of my bedroom. I still remember what he looked like. He wore a navy blue jacket that had gold buttons on either side, and a black cap. He had blonde hair and a very warm smile. He just stood there in the doorway staring at me. Even though he seemed kind, I just lay there, too afraid to say or do anything. After about a minute, he tipped his hat to me, did a military-style about face, took two steps, and disappeared into thin air. That was the first and last time I ever saw him. Thank you so much for listening and for being part of my family of darkness. If you'd like to hear more stories, click on the screen above or on the link in the description below so you can stay scared until we meet again, my friends.